Hi guys, it's me again. Um, and this next technique I'm going to show you is pointillism. This is a little challenging because pointillism takes quite a long time to build up. So I'm going to show you some things that um, I hope will help you understand this. So the first thing I wanted to show you was a one done by a student, which is a, um, a leaf in, on a background. And um, I think what you can see as you look closer here um, that this whole surface is covered with some kind of a dot type pattern. It doesn't have to be a circle, perfect circle dot, um, but there's really no big like flat shapes of color. Um, the key to pointillism is um, letting the color mix, letting colors, different colors sit beside each other. Um, and then also if you don't want it to be too mushy, then letting it dry in between a little bit so you're not putting one wet color onto another. So I'm going to show you a couple of little samples that um, I've done as, as samples here in the classroom before. This is just, again, my classic sort of apple type shape. And one of the things that you'll see that's sort of helpful is to know very clearly where your, um, where your light source is because uh, you're looking at a lot of pixels, basically. And here's another one. And, um, and so it can be quite sort of overwhelming to have all this sort of visual activity happening and kind of, and so being really clear in your own idea, in your own head of where lights and darks are and where edges of things are and things like that, that's gonna help you really be clear in terms of articulating this. So what I've done, and I'm hoping that this will work enough, we'll get far enough along so that you can kind of see what's going on is, I've made two, whoops, two backgrounds. Um, so you can start with a white piece of paper. The only reason I suggest you might consider not starting with a white piece of paper is because it takes a lot of dots to cover up all that white. So I sometimes will put a light um, color down in the general areas where I want something to happen. So you can see I've got a circle here and I've got a background here. And um, if I'm thinking of an apple against a blue background, this is basically the way I started. Um, and then I started putting, in this case, I've got kind of an orange um, uh, series of uh, dot. I'm going to call them dots, even if they're not round um, strokes. But then I also actually made one where um, the background are the opposite of what I might expect. So in this case, the background is orange and the apple is blue. And the reason I did that is because I want to kind of show you as I work on this how having something um, that's sort of opposite of what you might expect can actually be really, really interesting because that continues to shine through in very small places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush. So, you know, I have, I, whoops, I happen to have a round sort of big brush, but you don't have to. I also use, you know, just a flat brush, whatever you have. They will make different marks, so it sort of varies a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and I'm going to go ahead and I've just put down one layer first here to get started because otherwise I'll never get through this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and I'm going to come along, whoops, I should probably should move this over since I'm left-handed. And I'm going to start adding some more color in here. In this case, I'm going to stick with this kind of pinkish color. Um, and I'm just going to start adding layers of this color and my decision is whether or not I put any of this pink in the background. And I think that I will put some in the background. Sometimes having some of um, a variety of colors in all the places helps hold the painting together, sort of helps unify it. Um, it's possible that all these pinks will get covered up eventually, but you know, I don't know. So that's where I'm at with this one at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on here. It's really hard for me to tell whether this is glary for you guys, so I apologize. Um, so I've gotten some pink up in that one corner. And I'm just going to go ahead and the same way, I'm going to go ahead and put some of this pink in the background. And I'm actually going to limit this pink to one side of the painting here, just to kind of show you how even though I have a lot going on and a lot of color, I can kind of help organize what we're seeing. Okay, so what I've got is I've got largely pink on that one side. All right, now, too bad I don't have someone to blow on this stuff, but that's okay. 
Now what I'm going to do is come in with um, maybe some a dark color. I've got a dark purple here. And um, gosh, what I really want is, oh, here's my board. It's a board to lean on. I'm make my life a little bit easier. And I'm going to come in with this dark purple. And I'm going to start actually um, just, I think I'm mostly going to put it in the background, but I want to get a little bit of it here in this uh, apple type object also. And I'm again thinking very clearly, okay, I'm going to go a little bit big because I'd really like to make some progress here while we're on the video and I don't want to make an hour long video. Um, so there's nothing, there's no rule about how big or small your um, marks should be, right? And you can even, you know, really so I just know I want this upper part to be lighter, so I'm going to go ahead. So you can start to see how that's now, oh yeah, okay. I've left, not on purpose, but accidentally, a little bit of that blue edge. So I'm just going to interrupt that a little bit. Okay, um, let's do the same thing with the other one. And see where we get. So exciting, isn't it? I feel like, uh, I don't know, I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm doing a circus here is what I feel like. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to put my purple, oops, sorry guys. I might have to get like an actual setup to do this. I'm going to put my purple on the opposite side from my pink. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of start establishing the dark over here. I have infinite infinite respect for Bob Ross and Julia Child right now. Like, just making it look easy. Showing you something and talking and keeping everything under control at the same time. It's way harder than it looks. At least for my generation. And I'm going to go ahead and bring a few of those onto this darker side of my apple shape. So that's what this guy's looking like, right? All right, what's next? I don't know. So I keep alternating between these because I keep thinking that it'll give these things just a little bit of time to set up and dry. Um, and again, I'm trying not to make this be like the 10 hour video here. Um, and let's see. Bring in a little bit of orange into this. Now, one thing that's for sure is I definitely have wet um, purple here. So if I don't want that to start mixing, or if I do a blob and then I get purple on my thing and I don't want it to go somewhere else, I really have to kind of um, you know, be aware of that. I'm going to take my orange and I'm going to mix a little bit of white in it so it's really the same color but it's lighter and I'm going to go ahead and start putting some of that over here in the background which is uh, a little bit too close to my my uh, background color so I'm going to change it a little bit just change it up a little bit That's what this guy's looking at like right now. Um, let's take this, bring this guy back in. Pretty funny, huh? Um, and let's go ahead and bring some of this in. So I don't want a lot of this in the background, but I do want to have some continuity. So I'm just going to put a few pieces here and there. And I'm even going to go over into the area where it's dark, in theory, and just bring a little bit in there. Okay, I think the next thing that this guy needs is some um, dark uh, colors. Out of see. And 
also maybe just a little bit of a different, just a different color too. So I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to bring some green into it. Okay. And just sort of, I've got a lot of sort of very similar colors in here and it feels to me like it really needs something a little bit different. So I'm going to come in here and start to fill in some of this. Can you see that starting to come in? Some of this background in with the green. It just felt to me like things were looking a little too uh, homogenous. And so I want to bring so now, yeah, that's a little more interesting, right? And then while I'm at it, I've got a green that's a little bit lighter. Why don't I bring a little bit of that over into my other side? So I'm bringing kind of a related color, but I've made it um, lighter. So I'm still in the same family, but Looking a little Easter eggy, isn't it? Um, okay, I'm going to do one more layer on this. I'm just going to get into some of this red here because um, I kind of want to wrap it up. And again, this is not going to be like, you know, a fabulous, fabulous uh, you know, it's done a little bit quickly and um, up and holding it upside. And so now I'm just going to bring some of this deep, dark red into the shadow here. It's almost kind of a burgundy color. So I'm actually starting to get a little bit muddy here, and it's because I am trying to do this all while it's wet, um, which is not the best way to do it. Um, but I think you can kind of get a sense of how that works. Um, so I think I'm going to stop there because unless I wait, oh, you know, I'll do one more little bit on this one here, just because I think it will help you guys see. Um, Come into this red <clears throat> and just a little bit of that in here. Uh, and honestly, this one could really use a different color as well. You know, like maybe even huh, maybe even some yellow. That's probably a good idea. Just to kind of liven things up a little bit here. So it's not great, it's not fabulous, but it's not bad. And what you can see is that you can really start to build um, uh, sort of all these mixture of colors where they don't really mix on the canvas, but they mix in your eye. Um, so for this technique, I would keep it pretty simple. You can see I did a circle on a background. So I would keep it pretty simple, choose simple shapes, simplify your shape if you have a complicated shape. and. Um, and also give yourself time. This is a great technique to work on while you're doing something else, right? So you do a little bit, you set it aside, you let it dry, you come back to it. And also whatever is wet on your palette from working on another painting, you just kind of bring it onto this. And that way I think you'll really get um, a variety. Now I do just want to show you because that the one on the top is the one, whoops, sorry, I'm sure there's a way to do this. The one on the top is the one where the background this one here is the one where the background actually was kind of the counterintuitive background, where the, the apple's background was blue and the background background was um, peach. This one here is the one where the apple's background was a little bit reddish and the 
back, other background was blue. So you can see this one's a little more harmonious and that this one's a little more um, sort of has a little more uh, kind of energy to it. So just something to keep in mind is you can use those opposites, those kind of unexpected opposites to your advantage if you want um, and sort of keep your painting alive in that kind of a way. Uh, okay, that's it guys. Thanks.